Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is going to cover chapter 8.6 in the textbook, and that is surface area of a sphere. Uh, the order I'm going to go through it is give you the formula as is, and just as before, I'm going to give you a brief and summarized explanation of how we get to that equation or the formula, sorry. For those of you who are not interested in that and just want to see it in action, you can, as usual, use a timestamp and jump to number three. But uh, call me biased, but I think the explanation is actually pretty interesting and um, mildly mind blowing. So I encourage you to watch through the entire video. But that's just my bias. Okay, uh, up until now, um, hopefully you've been keeping up. There is a problem set up. Please try that first before you watch this video so you don't end up sort of confusing yourself. The problem set it has nothing to do with chapter 8.6 or the next video. So yeah, with that said, um, let's get to it. The formula for a surface area of a sphere. In case you're not sure what a sphere is, it's not a circle because a circle is 2D. Okay, this is actually 3D. And the best way I can do it is, um, I don't know, use my, my wife's apple drawing skills. Because, you know, she was painting with my daughter, or drawing with crayons with my daughter. Mm. Did I do enough of a job? Oh, wow, that is really bad. How about this? How about this? There it is. There's a shadow. Okay, that's a 3D. Okay, so it's basically a circle, but it involves um, taking up a certain amount of space in uh, 3D. Okay, in other words, it has volume. And surface area means how much area is covered by the outer layer. Another way I could describe it is if I were to, let's say you were trying to pack a basketball or, or a baseball or something, right? And you're trying to give that as a present to your friend and you had to wrap that with wrapping paper. How much wrapping paper do you need? Okay, that's a little hard. And if you've ever tried to wrap something that is circular, I'm not talking about a cylinder, but actually circular, you will know that the wrapping paper ends up getting crinkled and, and getting really, really annoying. Okay, so that is surface area. The surface area, uh, oh yeah, the surface area of a sphere, surface area of a sphere is four pi r squared. Does that look sort of familiar? It's essentially the, the formula for the area of a circle, but we're multiplying it by four. Now, is there a relationship with an area of a sphere and the surface area? Yes and no. Uh, here's my explanation. Uh, honestly, again, you can sort of prove that this is true with higher level mathematics, but at the grade nine level, this is the best way I can uh, sort of help you describe or explain the formula. Could you imagine a regular circle? Okay, so this is my radius, okay? And what is the circumference of that circle? Well, it would be two pi r. Now imagine that this circle had a metal pole going right through it, okay? And on that metal pole, I connected another circle of the exact identical circle, but I sort of, twisted it. So it's a little bit higher, right? That's another circle. And what is the circumference of the outer layer? Well, that would be 2 pi r. Now imagine I took another circle of identical size and I hinged it on that same metal pole and then I tilted it up a little bit. That's another 2 pi r. So if I were to, again, continue adding circles, Oh, anyways, adding circles 
more and more circles, more and more circles. And I added so many finally to the point where all of these gaps between every single circle was filled with other 2D circles. Can you imagine what happens if I fill all those gaps? Well, you guessed it. I have a pole, but I essentially have a full sphere. Um, is there another way I can explain it? Oh, that's a little bit hard. Maybe you could think about it as a slinky. If you were to take a slinky, I don't know how many people have a slinky. Okay. You know that these metal coils have space between it. But imagine that slinky was so packed that it actually covered the covered all space and you actually couldn't see the space between each metal coil. Now imagine it was so packed that I could actually bring that coil all the way back to where it started from. I would basically create a metal slinky donut, wouldn't I? You could think about it like that, but it's basically the entire thing. You might have seen sort of um, paper mache or origami things that look sort of like this as well. But in essence, what I'm trying to say is the circumference of a circle, 2 pi r, is added with other two pi r's again and 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 again, and it's basically rotated a full 360 degrees. Um, and then again, using certain higher maths to calculate what all of that would be added to. Uh, I, uh, man, that's I guess that's the best explanation I can give right now. We end up with this formula for pi r squared. Um, is this the best explanation? Is this even a correct explanation? Uh, for now, I think it's the best one I've got. Sorry if it's like absolutely wrong or it just doesn't make any sense to you. But honestly, even the textbook doesn't give much of an explanation and I think it's you know a, a brilliant piece of math. So there it is. Uh, let's move on to the actual example questions. This is page 459, number four. Please note, the homework asks you, asks you to do numbers one to, four, one to eight. I'm gonna do four and seven with you. So if you have a textbook, bust it out, and we'll do them together. Grab a paper, grab a pencil, pause the video. Okay. Question four, a basketball has a diameter. Okay, it has a diameter of 24.8 centimeters. How much leather is required to cover this ball? It's the nearest tenth of a square centimeter. So again, because I'm talking about how much I need to cover, it has nothing to do with the amount of space this sphere takes up. It's just about the outer layer. In other words, I am looking for surface area. In chapter 8.7, we're gonna start blending surface area with volume. You're going to look, need to look for keywords that explain or keywords that indicate what uh, formula you are going to be using. All right, so the diameter is 24.8. The radius is going to be the division of two. That would be 12.4 centimeters. And surface area is going to be four pi r squared, which is four pi 12.4 squared equals. Ooh, 1932.205, so on and so forth. And it's asking for the nearest square centimeter. So it's going to be 1932 square centimeters. Why is it squared? Well, you could think about radius being centimeters, and in whatever radius I have, it's going to be squared. Centimeters times centimeters, centimeters squared. Another way to give it away is the fact that we're talking about area, surface area. Okay, that's question seven, uh, sorry, question four A. Question four B says, if the leather costs $28 per meter squared, how about I do this? Per one meter squared. 
What does it cost to cover the basketball? Well, take a look. I have meters squared as my uh, unit of measure. The question gives it to me as centimeters squared. What is the conversion from centimeters to meters? Well, here's a reminder. 100 centimeters equals one meter. But 100 centimeters squared does not equal one meter squared. Please be careful. Why is that? Well, to go from one meter, what do I have to multiply to get one meter squared? Going once, going twice. You would multiply one meter by another one meter to get one meter squared. An example, here is a piece of paper. Let's pretend it's like wrapping paper. The length is one meter. The width is one meter. What's the area? One times one, one meter squared. With me? Well, we already know. Let me use a highlighter. We already know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So I can turn this equation into 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters. I could turn this picture into 100 centimeters and 100 centimeters, width and length. So what's the area? 100 times 100 is 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeters squared. One, two, three, four centimeters squared. One meter squared is equal to 10,000 centimeters squared. Some of you may or may not have known that. Well, now you do. So if I have one thousand nine hundred and thirty two centimeters squared, how many meters is that? Well, here's a unit conversion thing that you can use even in grade 10. Oops. Okay. I have 1932 centimeters squared. I'm going to multiply it with a conversion factor, a conversion fraction. If I have centimeters squared on top, I'm going to have the centimeter squared on the bottom so that I can reduce the unit. Okay, that's where I'm going. Well, centimeter squared, what is the unit I want to change it to? I want to change it to meter squared. So the unit that you want to change it to is going to be in the numerator. All right, now that you have the unit set up, what is the actual quantity? That are equal to each other. Well, 10,000 is at the centimeter side, one is at the meter side. Centimeters gone, centimeters gone. Multiply across, one times 1,932 is just 1,932, and one times 10,000 is just 10,000. If you work this out in the calculator, you get 0.1932. What's the unit? Not centimeters, because that's gone. Meter squared. All right. So back to the question. I have $28 per one meter squared. How much is the final cost? The final cost is in dollars. I want to get rid of meters, don't I? I'm going to multiply this by. I don't even need the one, my goodness. Sorry. Okay, unit cancels, unit cancels, multiply across. This is going to equal 5.4096. That's approximately $5.41. Uh, this is the amount of, so therefore, $5.41 worth of leather is used to cover the basketball.
there it is. Okay, you might want to review that or take a look at that question again or try it again before you do it yourself. I'm going to move on to chapter seven, which means, uh, sorry, number seven, which means I need to clear this sheet in three, two, one. Okay, number seven. Chapter problem. Emily is placing a gazing ball in one of her customer's gardens, sort of like, I guess it's like a crystal ball. Bling, bling. Okay. Um, the ball has a diameter of 60 centimeters. It will be covered with reflective crystals. One jar of these crystals covers one meter. One jar equals one meter squared in surface. Estimate the surface area to decide whether one jar will be enough. And then we're going to calculate. Okay. So again, the key word was cover. So I'm assuming it's going to be surface area. Let's estimate. I'm not using the calculator. That's a four. Uh, pi 3.14, too much work. I'm going to round pi to a three. The radius is going to be half of 60. It's going to be 30 squared. So four times three times 30 squared, that's 900. And then four times, three times nine is 27. And then four times 27, oof, eight, one, zero, eight, zero, zero centimeters squared. I already have more than one zero 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 centimeters squared, which means I already have more than one meter squared of surface area. Is one jar enough? One jar is not enough. That's estimating. B, so let's actually calculate the real value to the nearest square centimeter. Four pi r squared. One one three zero nine point seven three three, which is approximately one one three zero uh, one zero centimeters squared. Um, how accurate? Uh, let's see. Was your estimate reasonable? I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like that those kinds of questions when I was a kid. Right? It, it was vague. It made zero sense to me. But let's try to answer it and you know, humor the textbook. Was your estimate reasonable? Well, I suppose it's close enough. But the main reason why you may want to improve on your estimating skill is sometimes you need to do some mental math uh, on the spot to see if a certain purchase or a certain selection is worth your money, is worth your time, is worth your investment. So it's not really about whether you're good at math or bad at math. It's more just improving your numeracy and your number sense. Okay. Another advantage of being able to estimate is understanding that if I estimated and notice how I use a smaller number, the number was already bigger than I wanted, which means if I end up using the correct number, Obviously, it's going to be bigger than my estimation. Get what I'm saying? You use a smaller number, it was already over. So you don't even need to do a harder calculation. You sort of saved yourself some time. You've already gotten the answer that you needed. All right. Hope that's good enough. Um, again, as a reminder, 459. Numbers one to eight. We did numbers four and seven together, but especially for number four, because it is a little bit technical. If you'd like to try that again and take a look at the video, by all means, do it. Uh, try these questions before moving on to the next video, which is on 8.7. Do your best, keep up. And uh, good news, I think some provincial parks and some areas are opening up. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Hang in there. Hope to see you soon. Bye.